Good afternoon, this is Avram Shiraf from Israel. It's Erev Shabbat. We have a few hours left before the beginning of uh, a new time zone, a new period in our lives. Each week is a building that leads to the construction of Shabbat, that leads to the completion of our work and the introduction of a developmental structure that we see everywhere in life. The entire creation is a developmental structure. It begins with one thing, God. And God creates from His light, darkness. Now we have two. And from there we have the beginning of the break, the developmental structure, meaning that each thing breaks into two and, and, and those don't multiply downward, that we have light and darkness, and then we have good and evil, and we have all these dichotomies of opposites that create free choice. All of that is happening on a psychic level before the physical world ever happens. Shabbat is the return to the original oneness with all the multiplicity included in it. Right? So we're going back to the oneness, but we first have to bring the light and dark back together, bring the good and evil together, bring the truth and falsehood to, to fix each other. And so we see this in the Arizal. We are in Shar Kavanot in uh, Leil Shishi. This is the uh, beginning of the preparation for Shabbat. And the Rav's going to talk about the weekdays in re relation to the building of the week that be begins on Motzi Shabbat and it goes all the way to Friday afternoon. And each day we're adding something new to creation as we see in the creation story itself in Breshit. And each day that we're adding something new to creation, we also do that with Shabbat. And ideally, we're told by the Gemara that Shammai, the great sage, was known with, for his learning and for his toughness of halacha and his work with Hillel, Azakain, Shammai would go into the Shuk and every day he would buy something new for Shabbat. He was building his Shabbat. Now, What's interesting is in the Kabbalah, we are taught also that there are kavanot, that each day you have an idea that today has a spark of Shabbat, and yesterday had a spark. And each day, we, when we have that consciousness, we're building the complete consciousness that will come through our souls tonight. So, let's go into the Arizal's text, and... It is some Shar Kavanot, Daf Samech Aleph, Amud Bet, if anybody wants to follow. And it's in Yalel Shishi, on the sixth day, the evening of the sixth day, Bi'anu Shechaven Adam Bechol Vav Yomei Ashechol, Lekabel to Sefet Shabbat. That every day we should have Kavana that we're receiving a new piece of Shabbat. And so that each one, it becomes a building process. Just like God creates creation, so too we build consciousness. Piece by piece, each one adds to the one before it and becomes a greater sum total. So one is the first day. The second day is two, but now you have the first day and the second day. Together they really make three. And then the next day is the third day. You add the three to the original three, you have six so there's a develop there's an exponential growth at the same time that there is the the basic numerical growth. And that's the spiritual power in the mind. This is how our minds expand. Each day adding to the previous day, and we're adding each day a new concept of Shabbat. But Yom Shishi, the sixth day, of course. The Rav says is more prepared and more appropriate as we approach Shabbat. Why? Because Shishi is a collection of all the previous five days. So all the work of the previous five days goes into the sixth day. Now everybody knows that Friday in the Jewish world is, is a little bit tight, a little bit tough, a little bit stressful because everybody's trying to get everything done for Shabbat. But what was happening the five days before is a preparation for, for Shishi really. So that when we have five good days of work, we bring that all together on the sixth day, put it all together, prepare it to bring to the king or to bring to the queen, if you prefer that metaphoric spin. It doesn't matter, really, because they're together and they are one. 
Now, so you see the Chishi, that is the Keneged, the sphere of Yesod, the, the bottom of the tree of life that gathers all the forces of the tree together into one before it's given over to the kingship. In other words, and, and a metaphor to understand this easier is that you have a tree that all the powers of the tree go into the creation of the flower and that flower blooms and it brings out the seed of new life. Right? So you have the sunlight and the water and the minerals and the, the, all the ac activity and, uh, ac that's going on inside the tree to bring the power to the tree to produce the flower. And then inside the flower is the production of the seed, which is born on Shabbat. And then guess what? We have a new potential for a new tree. And so too and so forth, creation continually repeats itself, and we are part of that. We are not spectators of creation. We are players in the game, you know, let's join the game here. Instead of just watching from the stadium. So the sixth day is the, the most prepared, the most ready, the most powerful. And that's why the Pasuk says, Vayom Hashishi, the Rav says, that Hey, before the word yom, because the creation story has vayivoker, vayer, vayiver, vayivoker, yom rishon, yom sheni, yom shlishi, and then it says she, she gets a, an extra hey. That extra hey is called the hey yadua. Rashi explains to us that it's really the creation of the oppo and e opposite and equal forces of creation, which are the negative forces, the dark forces, we call them the shadow kingdom, the dark crowns. There's all kinds of nicknames for the other side. And they're necessary. Without them, we cannot have free choice. However, the goal is not to choose them, right? But that's, that hay is the creation, we're told, of the evil inclination itself. So it was a good thing. Now, it's not a, it's not a wonder that that hay becomes anthropomorphized as this primordial snake in the garden story, because he was created on the sixth day. So immediately he gets busy with Chava and Adam. And he goes and does what he does. And he did what he was supposed to do. Unfortunately, well, we're still trying to fix the results of his activities. Okay, and so then all the things that we've done during the week are brought together on the Friday. And then we produce something beautiful and new, like that flower, like that tree. And, and that becomes the pleasures of Shabbat. And the Rebbe's Bezeh, the Rav says, Ki beyom ha-shishi mechin l'shabad l'fi sheyom vav hu k'neged ha-yesod. He says what we learned already, that, that everything is brought to yom shishi, the vav, the sixth day, and that's k'neged, the sixth sphera on the tree, which is called yesod, which is k'neged, the sexual organs, because those are the organs that bring new life into the world. Now everything else has to go into those organs to produce the new baby, that's, that, that comes out into the world. And, but it comes through the sphere of Shishi. So that, that birth aspect is going on on Friday. So maybe that's why Friday is so tough. You know, <laughs> the world is, is giving birth to a new Shabbat and a new set of lights for creation. And of course, all of this is for the sake of the kingship, which is the power of revelation itself. And this is Shabbat itself, which is called this shining lens that doesn't have anything in it. Kingship is itself empty, except what you bring to the king. The king cannot bring all his wealth and say, I'm king. The only way the king gets to be king is if everybody else says, you're king. So when we make God king on Rosh Hashanah and say, Hashem Hu HaMelech, we are making him king because otherwise without anybody doing it, God, can't, God can stand all day in the middle of the universe and tell the universe, I'm king, I'm king, but nobody cares, nobody listens because they don't have free choice to be part of the decision-making process to say, yes, he's king, he's the great one, he's the real thing. And so Yom Shishi is the day that we prepare ourselves to do that. 
And that's the bringing to Yisod, and the Yisod gives all the, the finished product of the week to the Shabbat. Now, this power of malchut, of kingship, is compared to this lens, this shining lens. Like, what good is a telescope if there's nothing to look at? What good is a magnifying glass if there's nothing beneath it? Right? It's just an empty lens. So kingship is a window. It's a window that you pass through into a new realm. And that, it's like you put all the ingredients into the, into the cake or into the bread. And then you put it in the oven. You don't call it bread until it comes out of the oven. Only when is it challah, it comes out of the oven, it's a new thing. It gets a new name. Before it goes in the oven, it's called dough, or it's called flour, and water, and eggs, and salt, and spices, etc. But only does it get the name challah when it comes out of the oven. And the oven is just the place that it increases the heat, and, and that removes the, the moisture from the challah, and it rises, and you have a nice, soft, hot bread. That power of the oven to transform the Dough into bread is like the malchut itself. This malchut is this, this power to transform the ingredients into something new. And that's creation. Something new. You are made of billions of little ingredients. But when you were born, ah, it all came together into this little special challah called you. <laughs> right? This little package, your parents were like, whoa, this guy is a special new creation. But as long as you were inside your mother, then you're still not called a live baby. You're alive, of course, but you don't have the same name as you do until after you come into this world. And the coming into this world is the passing through that window called Shabbat, called the Ispakaria, the late Lamigarma Klum, in the, in the language of, of Aramaic Kabbalah, it means that lens that doesn't have anything of its own. Ella ma she yahivla yisod. So she only has what the yisod gives her. Lechain sarich tichaven lavin lachin achanazo. And therefore, we need to have intention that we're doing this when we're doing the preparations. Now, this is not something that you have to be a, a kabbalist for fifty years to figure out. All you have to do is think it. And the same thing, by the way, is true during the week. All you have to do is think on Sunday when you go to the market, I'm going to buy this for Shabbat. And on Tuesday, you know, I'm going to buy that for Shabbat. That's already doing the Kavanah. Now, when you think about it first, you, you enrich it, you deepen your thought. But you're still accessing the idea of preparation for Shabbat each day. And that's the Kavanah here of the Arizal, the greatest Kabbalist who, who ever lived. So look, you know, don't be intimidated. The kavanot are for everybody, each person at their level and their place and their time. And if you have the intention that you want to connect each day of the week to build your Shabbat, you're doing it. You're doing it. And it's a wonderful thing. And I'll tell you why it's wonderful. Because you'll remember Shabbat and the pleasure of Shabbat during the week. And it's amazing. Sometimes I, I look around in the daytime and I'm thinking, what day is today? Is today? It feels like Shabbat. Why does a Tuesday feel like a Shabbat or a Thursday? Because I'm not working? Well, <laughs> maybe. No, but really it's because I'm, I'm experiencing that state of mind of Shabbat, that state of freedom from the forces that are demanding of us something. And that freedom is something that you have to work for, you have to earn. Because the world has a right to say, you know, you need to go to work, you need to pay your bills, you need to go shopping, you need to help your wife or your husband. All those things are legitimate requests. But if I don't receive them properly, they become heavy. But when you have Shabbat in your mind and in your heart, then it, you're still living a part of Shabbat during the week. Okay. Okay. 
And all of this preparation comes Me'erev Shabbat K'day Shi'avi Yom HaShabbat V'yimsa'ehu Muchan. Right, and all of this is that by the time Shabbat comes, we're already ready. This idea of being ready is, is, is an interesting idea. It sounds very simple. I'm ready to go on a trip. You, you, pack, you packed your bags, you packed your car, you're ready to go camping. Very nice. You know, you packed your trailer, you're going on a cross-country journey. Very good. The preparation is a big part of how you experience the day itself. The, the, the more prepared I am, the more thorough I am, the more precise I am, the more pleasure I have on Shabbat. I use the camping metaphor because we like to go camping, but really, you know, I, I notice that a lot of times I go on a camping trip and I'm missing things. Oh, I should have brought that silverware. I should have brought that, you know, that grill or whatever it is. And it, it, it would have been nice to have it there in the middle of the forest or over there by the, the, the cave of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. It would have been nice to have a little extra thing from home. So that little niceness that's part of the preparation. So same, uh, same, same idea applies to Shabbat. That on Shabbat, you want that, you know, you get up, at, say you get up at 2 or 3 in the morning and you can't sleep and so you go downstairs to make a tea and you'd like to have a little something while you open a safer and peruse the universe. So if you made something little, for just that moment, it becomes very special the moment you come to it. You know, there's certain cakes that people make just for Shabbos morning. And there's certain drinks that people make just for Friday night. And so on and so forth. That little precision in your preparation, you, get, you benefit, you experience a greater pleasure when you come to it on Shabbat itself. So it's not all haphazard. Okay, just make the, you know, make the chicken, make the challah, bring the bottle of wine, yalla, have a salad. No, but it's not, it's not so simple because the more attention we pay before Shabbat, the more pleasure we derive during Shabbat. And the Rav says, And this is, this is the correct way to prepare, and this is ra'ui, it is fitting. It is fitting for a Jew to be in Shabbat a little bit every day of the week and not to let ourselves think that there's these two different times because the entire week is building the Shabbat and Shabbat is giving to those days. We don't see how it works, but in, in the higher realms, we know that everything is coming from the Malchut and through the tree of life. And so the Shabbat is the experience of those powers that are coming from Malhut all week long. So, you know, it's, it's something that you have to train yourself a little bit to pay attention to. But when you do, suddenly your weekday is different. Suddenly you have this longing for Shabbat. You have this consciousness that Shabbat is coming. And, oh, I can't wait till Shabbat gets here. And it's not just because I, I can sit down and relax with my family. That is a great thing unto itself, of course. But it's also about this idea of bringing together all the forces of creation to the fruition, to the blossoming of that beautiful flower of your weekday's work. So, now is Friday and we only have a little time left for preparation. But it really begins Saturday night. You know, if you, even when I clean the candlesticks... On Saturday night, I'm already thinking about next week's Shabbat. And you can build your whole week that way. So, it's great to be here on, on, on Facebook Live with all of you. And look for us on Patreon, on YouTube, uh, and all the other outlets. And we'll continue our work because it is not done. All the best. Shabbat Shalom.